Tom moves to a small town with his daughter, Grace, for a fresh start after his wife's passing. He starts falling for a friendly local, Elizabeth, as he and Grace try to solve the mystery of a time capsule. Tom and Grace arrive in the small town of Ashbury Grove. They have just moved from Australia, and he is looking forward to an authentic American Christmas. He knows a new place can be scary for Grace, but he tries to make it exciting for her. Grace wanted to attend the Christmas fair back home, so Tom promises to make it up to her. He wants to focus on the fun stuff, like dressing up as elves to meet her classmates. Grace doesn't like the idea, so he suggests starting off with decorating their new place. They bring the boxes inside, but Grace looks very upset. It doesn't feel right to move into a new place without her mother. Tom thinks her mother will always be with them. He makes her pancakes from the buckwheat flour he found. She's not used to this, but is very understanding about it. He plans to unpack all the boxes with her that day, and asks her to think of it as opening Christmas presents. She finds a participation ribbon he saved, because he's proud of all her achievements. Grace thinks it's beautiful outside, and has never seen real snow before. He knows Grace has to make up for the 13 years she didn't play with it. He asks her to have fun while he handles the chores. As Grace makes snowballs, something sticks out from underneath her. She digs up a box with keepsakes and a letter. The writer has mentioned ways in which someone can have the best Christmas in town. They suggest starting with a cup of hot cocoa from Luna's Cafe. The next step is to bake candy cane cookies with the recipe provided. After that, the traditions mention saying a prayer in the nativity scene, and picking out the best tree with a handmade craft ornament. The last move is the Christmas candlelight service to see the tree lighting. These traditions are important to the writer's family. Grace brings the box inside when Tom decides to take a break. He recognizes it as a time capsule, and Grace wonders who made it. Tom explains that people usually bury something like this to let the finder get a glimpse into their life. For that reason, it's mostly kept for someone lucky like Grace to find. She still wants to find out who made it, but Tom doesn't know if they still live around there. Grace thinks if they do everything on the list, they are likely to bump into this person. They still have a lot of unpacking to do, but Grace reminds him he wanted a break. He can't say no to hot cocoa with her, and they head to their first stop from the list at Luna's Cafe. Grace notices that the cup from the capsule came from this cafe. Tom compliments Elizabeth on the place, and thinks it looks like Santa's workshop. She credits her mom, April, for it, since she decorated. They ask for hot cocoa, but it just sold out. April thinks it's her fault she didn't order enough cocoa. Elizabeth assures them she will restock and have cups with their names ready the next day. April asks Grace if she likes Christmas, and they both bond over their love for presents and food. April gifts Grace a candy cane to hold her off till they come back. In the meantime, Tom decides to order a latte. Elizabeth knows he must be new to town, because she knows everyone. Tom shares that he's from Sydney, where Elizabeth always wanted to go. He thinks Sydney is the best in spring and fall. She knows it must be a huge change to go from that weather to their cold town. Tom still thinks of this as a pleasant change, and agrees with her that the snowfall at night is magical. She offers help if he needs anything in the town. Tom and Grace leave to shop for cookie ingredients, and he starts baking at home. He points to a batch Grace can decorate while he receives a work call. Natalie has been trying to reach him for a while. He explains that he wants to make his daughter's first Christmas in America very special. But Natalie has bad news, because her team can't pull off the backyard Christmas fair he wants till December 23rd. Most of the vendors he requested are already booked. He couldn't inform her sooner, because he wasn't sure if they would be in America in time for Christmas. This time of the year is usually busy, but Tom still wants his daughter to have something special after she went through so much with the move. Natalie is also busy, but she offers to look for alternative ideas for him. She still asks him to scale down, but needs his time to plan something. He informs Grace he will have to work for a few hours on a special project. He can't reveal what it is, but promises it will make sense soon. She knows it must be important, and offers to decorate the cookies herself. He promises to make it up to her by finding out the owner of the time capsule. The next task on their list is visiting the nativity scene, and he plans to go with her after this. Grace comes back to the cafe to drop off some cookies for Elizabeth and April. She explains her dad had to stay back for some work. Since Grace isn't doing anything interesting, Elizabeth offers to let her help in the kitchen with some scones. Tom leaves a mail to ask for vendor's availability. He calls out to Grace to ask about the cookies, but there's no response. He looks around and finds a note saying she's going back to the cafe. Tom rushes there and asks Elizabeth about Grace. Elizabeth thought Tom knew where she was, but he only found out 10 minutes ago. He thanks her for taking care of her in his absence. Grace is excited about learning how to make dough, but she can tell Tom is upset. She left a note because she didn't want to disturb him while he was working. He makes it clear that she's not supposed to leave without informing, especially in an unfamiliar place. He reminds her that he's never too busy for her, and asks her to communicate better next time. He apologizes to Elizabeth for the drama, because he gets worried as a dad. He realizes they're working on his favorite raspberry scones, which Elizabeth loves too. April is impressed with their second visit in the day, and thanks Grace for the cookies. She compliments Tom for raising a very sweet girl. April teases Elizabeth about Tom, since she noticed he's not wearing a ring. 
Elizabeth doesn't want her mom to try and set her up again. She's not looking to date, but April thinks it's always the same excuse with her. She knows the holiday season is tough for Elizabeth, which is why she wants her to share it with someone but she promises to not push her for a while. Tom has packed many old items Grace made when she was little. They find her mother's angel for the tree, and Tom remembers a story of his own childhood. When he was a teenager, he had a sparkly star that was so bright that he was afraid it would blind him. Grace asks if they can use some new decorations. But Tom wants some things to stay the same with all these changes. As Grace reads the letter that night, Tom wonders if she got more clues. She can't tell if a boy or a girl wrote it, and asks if they can go to the candlelight ceremony mentioned in the letter. Tom is planning his surprise for her that day, so he makes an excuse about having a project deadline. He doesn't make promises, but hopes they have time for both. Grace thinks they can find the capsule owner before that. She thinks if it was hers, she would want it back since it seems very special. Tom knows she can solve the mystery, and asks for the newspaper article from the box. He thinks the boy from the picture could have made the capsule. He might be at the nativity scene tomorrow, so he tucks her in bed to prepare for the next day. At the nativity scene, Grace recognizes a man who was at the cafe too, and got their last cup of cocoa. She thinks that's a clue, and he could be the one. The man announces that his family has been planning nativity for years. He has added a special edition this year, and even Tom admits he seems to love Christmas. April seems upset because Elizabeth hasn't come to the nativity scene in a while. Tom claims they're headed to the cafe right after they speak to the man. But the man has disappeared, and he asks April about him. The man they're looking for is David Smith, who used to live in their house earlier. He works at the Christmas tree lot outside down, and should be back the next day. That seems like a long time to Grace. But before they can visit, Grace wants to make their tree ornaments. She hopes to catch David at the craft store. They head to the cafe first to get the hot coca. April asks Elizabeth to consider doing something this year. She isn't ready, but April thinks her father would be proud of her for trying. Tom arrives with Grace and asks for their famous hot cocos. April is finishing the cupcakes, and offers to let Grace taste test the buttercream. Tom wonders if things are fine, because he heard her and April arguing. Elizabeth explains that April wants her to give a speech at the candlelight ceremony. She doesn't want to, because this time of the year is bittersweet for her. She can't explain the details, but Tom understands that public speaking can be tough. She changes the topic to the cocoa she saved for them on the house. When he tastes it, he finally understands what the hype is about. Grace also loves the hot cocoa, but they need to head back to make ornaments. Elizabeth is surprised they're making their own, and Tom explains that it's a new tradition this year. Grace wants to make an ornament for David too when they give back his capsule. Tom doesn't think they're sure it's David's. But Grace feels all the evidence lines up. She has run out of glue halfway through the project, so Tom offers to run by the store to get more. When he's back, he realizes April is their next-door neighbor. She doesn't believe in coincidences, and asks how he likes the place. He is worried about unpacking, but it's starting to feel like home to him. She invites him and Grace over for dinner the next day. His mother has taught him to never go anywhere empty-handed, so she asks him to bring a holiday trifle with cranberries and pecans. That seems specific and Tom has never made it before. But April knows Elizabeth can help him out. Elizabeth finds Tom working hard on the decorations the next day. April had asked her to come by her place to turn on the slow cooker for the ham. She offers to help with the decorations, and they have fun putting them up. Tom thinks they make a good team, and thanks her. He remembers he had to ask her about the trifle, and explains why he's making it. That dessert is Elizabeth's specialty, and she is sure April is trying to play matchmaker again. She even told Elizabeth to wear something nice for dinner. They get a little awkward, but she still offers to share her recipe. Tom is useless in the kitchen, so she asks him to stop by the bakery before she closes up. Before leaving, she also wants to check if Grace needs help with the ornaments. When Tom comes back in, he notices Elizabeth and Grace playing in the snow and having a great time. Tom is deciding which shirt to wear, and Grace teases him about going on a date. He clarifies that Elizabeth is only helping him with the recipe. He promises they will go to see David when he gets back. Tom arrives at the bakery when it's time for Elizabeth to close up. They discuss how quickly time flies, which seems more drastic to Tom because of the international move. He's planning to buy the ingredients, but Elizabeth has already picked them out. She hands him the recipe, but he seems confused about how to make cranberry sauce. In Australia, they usually buy it in a can. She thinks it's only good if it's made fresh and decides to teach him. She shows him what all to put in the sauce, and claims orange zest is the secret ingredient. As they wait for it to boil, she assures him he will never go back to canned sauce after this. He asks how she's so confident in the kitchen. Her dad taught her everything about baking, and this trifle recipe is originally his. He feels special because she's willing to share the family recipe with him. She wonders why they moved to Ashbury Grove of all the places. Tom remembers they did a US trip when Grace was a baby, and have fond memories of this place. Elizabeth knows this place is special too. She has been running the cafe for a long time, and has some good and bad memories of it. She hesitates before sharing more, but he assures her they're friends. He promises to be a good listener. Elizabeth shares that her dad built the place when she was little. He named it after their dog, and she grew up in the kitchen. 
He got sick right before Christmas and still came to the kitchen every day to help her. When she works this time of the year, it brings back all those sad memories. Tom feels bad about forcing her to discuss this, but she feels better sharing it with someone. Tom can relate because his late wife also got sick a few years ago and passed away. It was hard to figure out what to do, because he wanted to be a good father. But he also needed time to grieve. It was tougher for him to leave the home they all shared together. But he and Grace needed a fresh start. He knows something like this loss never gets better, and they have to live with it. He holds her hand to comfort her, but gets a call from Grace. He needs to take Grace to the tree lot, since it closes soon. She offers to finish the trifle for him. He knows it's too much to ask, but thanks her for being so generous. Grace is glad they don't have to eat cranberry sauce from a can. She likes to try new things, but is more excited about April making her favorite ham for dinner. They arrive just when David is closing up. Grace hands over the time capsule, but he doesn't recognize it. He is sure this handwriting isn't his, and he doesn't have any siblings either. He has no idea who put it in the house, but wishes them luck to find the person. Elizabeth welcomes Tom and Grace, and secretly hands him the trifle she made. April thinks it looks almost as good as Elizabeth's. Elizabeth suggests eating some of Grace's cookies before dinner. Grace grabs one and starts admiring April's tree. She looks around and asks about one specific ornament. April explains that Elizabeth made it when she was her age. Grace realizes she could be the capsule owner, and asks Tom to look at the ornament. After tasting the cookies, Elizabeth asks how they made it. The cookies taste exactly like what Elizabeth used to make with her dad. She lists out the ingredients, which are exactly what Tom and Grace used. Grace gets excited, and offers to get the time capsule. Elizabeth remembers making the capsule with her dad when he first got sick. She kept wondering if someone found it. She buried it on the day her dad was taken to the hospital, and April had left her at David's house. She doesn't remember everything in it, but gets teary when she reads out the letter. She thanks them for finding something this special to her. Tom and Grace are glad it got back to the rightful owner. Tom informs her that they took inspiration from her letter, and followed the traditions. They're still left with getting the tree and going to the candlelight ceremony. April suggests they should all go to the ceremony together. That way, she hopes Elizabeth will give her speech. Tom tries to get out of it, but April insists they have to be there as part of the community. Grace explains that Tom has a big project deadline that day. He also can't guarantee they will make it. April understands this, but wants them to still get the tree the next day. April wants to get a smaller tree for the foyer, and asks Elizabeth to get it with Tom. When she suggests they can have lunch after that, Elizabeth and Tom understand she's trying to set them up again. April asks Grace to help her bake bread around the same time, which is something she has always wanted. Tom thanks April for the meal, and even Elizabeth thinks she has outdone herself. When April compliments the dessert, Tom admits Elizabeth made the whole thing. He also appreciates fresh cranberry sauce more now. When Grace asks for Elizabeth, April joins Tom. She explains how tough the holidays can get for Elizabeth, even if it used to be her favorite time. She knows the capsule is very special for her, and Tom understands how hard this time must be for both of them. But April has noticed that Elizabeth looks much happier since Tom came to town. She hopes he keeps doing whatever he is doing to make her happy. She loves to see her daughter's happiness, and Tom can relate to that. He hasn't seen Grace as happy as she looks with Elizabeth in a long time. Tom shares how tough it is to move to a new country with someone as young as Grace. It hasn't been easy for her, and he discusses the special project he is working on. He wants it to be a surprise for Grace, but is not sure it's working out the way he hopes. He can't seem to find people on such short notice. April thinks he's a thoughtful father, but share advice as someone who has experienced a lot. Like him, she used to always plan every detail with backup plans. Because of that, she never enjoyed the moment. She realized after Elizabeth's father passed away that she needs to soak up every part of life. She thinks even if things don't work out according to his plan, life usually has much better plans in store. He thanks April for the advice, but gets a call from Natalie. Some vendors have become available, but Natalie can't oversee the fair. She asks him to take over, even if it will mean a lot of work for him. Most of the prep work is done, but she needs Tom to finalize the menu, contracts, schedules and paychecks. Tom is willing to do anything if it makes his daughter's Christmas special. Natalie sends him some files, and he knows it'll be a long night of work. Grace is still awake, and he congratulates her for finding the capsule owner. She felt great to help Elizabeth that way, and remembers the look on her face. She can tell Tom likes her, and thinks Elizabeth likes him too. She wants him to know she's fine with him and Elizabeth, because her mom would want him to be happy. As they head to the tree lot, Elizabeth can tell Tom didn't get much sleep. He explains the special project he's planning for Grace. Elizabeth thinks Grace is lucky to have a dad who cares so much. He seems to be in good spirits, but the holidays still depress her. The time capsule has made her realize how special her traditions were. She now thinks she might find her Christmas spirit again. Tom knows nothing about real trees, so she starts explaining the different types. They all look same to him, and he knows he will realize when he likes something. The tree Elizabeth suggests seems too short, so she decides to earmark it for her mom's foyer. Tom finds a perfect tree, and a star topper that makes him remember his childhood. Since he's excited about it, Elizabeth thinks he should get it. 
but it's not for sale, so Tom buys the one he chose. After dealing with synthetic trees, he feels the smell of fresh pine is very special. He remembers his childhood again, and how some things are reminding him of specific memories. He thinks there have been too many coincidences since he came to this town. He wonders if everything that happened since he came there is meant to be. He leans in to kiss her, but she backs off when the bell rings. She makes an excuse about being late for the bakery and asks him to hurry. Grace is impressed with the tree Tom selected, and gets ready to decorate with him. She wonders about his special project, and he promises to tell her the next day. He admits things with Elizabeth ended weirdly, but promises Grace he will directly tell her how he feels. Elizabeth comes over the next morning to discuss their awkward moment in the tree lot. He gets a call from Natalie, who informs him that the vendors can't make it because of a snowstorm heading their way. Elizabeth knows the storm is about to miss their town, but the roads will still be closed. She knows he's disappointed and offers any help. He knows he will figure it out later. But he asks about what she wanted to say earlier. She doesn't think this is the right time, so Tom decides to share his thoughts. He admits he has feelings for her, and thought they were mutual. Elizabeth explains that everything he said about coincidences was a lot for her. The holidays are hard, and the bond between him and Grace reminds her of her relationship with her dad. She has loved getting to know Tom, but she's scared. She doesn't reveal what she's scared of, and runs away. Elizabeth asks April if she can skip the ceremony. She wants to be alone at the bakery. April still comes to check on her. She knows something must have happened with Tom. Elizabeth doesn't like being vulnerable, and backs off when she feels exposed. When Tom admitted his feelings, she wanted to tell him she reciprocates it. But she freezes, and April knows it's because she is scared of losing him too. April knows she doesn't want to let people in, but explains how important it is to be vulnerable. If the person she wants to let in is worth it, then April thinks she should give it a chance. She also knows Elizabeth has grown more in the last week than she has in the whole year. If she pushes herself, April knows she won't regret it. Grace walks into the backyard and finds Tom's preparations. She realizes this is the special project he was working on. It's different from what he planned because of the weather. But Grace is already impressed, and thinks this is the best Christmas yet. She's not afraid of change, and can handle anything as long as they're together. They also have some new traditions now, so she already feels like an American. To honor new traditions, they decide to head to the candlelight ceremony. Elizabeth hasn't prepared a speech about her father. He started this tradition, and Elizabeth feels hurt when she thinks about it but April knows she is strong and can get through this. She hands over the newspaper clipping to Elizabeth and asks her to speak from her heart. Tom and Grace make it in time for Elizabeth's speech. She thanks the crowd and explains how public speaking was never her thing. She has trouble expressing things that matter the most. But recently, she got a reminder about the need to maintain family traditions. She thinks these traditions make everything special. With that thought, she dedicates the tree lighting to her father. Even if he's gone, she knows a part of him lives in her through these traditions. Tom is moved by the speech, and Elizabeth admits she's finally ready to express how she feels. April takes Grace away with an excuse so they can be alone. Elizabeth admits she is scared of losing people she cares about since her dad passed away. She thought if she didn't admit her feelings for Tom, it would be like nothing happened. But she knows that's not possible, because she really likes him. She wants to see where their relationship goes. He kisses her, and Grace feels proud she knew they had feelings for each other. The tree lighting begins, and Tom gets a call from Natalie. The roads have cleared up, and she can send the vendors to him again. He asks her not to, so the vendors can also spend time with their families. He is proud of creating a new tradition as they speak. He also asks Natalie to make sure the vendors keep their deposits. He gets back, and they all get clicked under the tree. They put more stuff back in the capsule for someone else to find. Since it brought them together, Elizabeth is excited about what will happen to the next people who find it. While Grace and April head inside to bake cookies, Elizabeth wants to talk to Tom. She thanks him for everything he has done, and gifts him the star tree topper he liked. He loves the gift, and wants to put this alongside the old topper. He knows this wasn't for sale, and wonders how she got it. Elizabeth told David Tom's story, so he let her have it. They all now enjoy Christmas together as a happy family. 